Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we're revisiting the GeForce GTX 980 Ti because I'm really keen to see how it stacks up against the newly released RTX 2060 and GTX 1660 Ti, particularly in newer titles such as Apex Legends, Resident Evil 2 and Far Cry New Dawn for example. Of course, while the GTX 1660 Ti features an MSRP of just $280 US and the RTX 2060 $350 US, the 980 Ti was much more expensive at $650. Still, it's a four-year-old GPU now, so you'd expect newer GPUs around half the price to deliver a similar level of performance. Whereas the 980 Ti packs 2,816 CUDA cores, the RTX 2060 has 32% fewer cores, and the 1660 Ti 45% fewer cores. That said, the Turing cores are wider, allowing them to execute more instructions, and they're also clocked higher. The NVIDIA spec for the 980 Ti calls for a boost clock of 1075 MHz, and this gives the RTX 2060 a 56% clock speed advantage, and then the GTX 1660 Ti a 65% clock speed advantage. The Turing GPUs are also paired with higher clocked GDDR6 memory, and this means while the RTX 2060 only has a 192-bit wide memory bus opposed to the much wider 384-bit wide bus of the 980 Ti, the faster memory means it has the same 336 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. Then the 1660 Ti has been downgraded to 288 gigabytes per second with its 12 gigabits per second memory, but as we've already seen, this doesn't really hurt it. Earlier this year, I put together an in-depth used graphics card buying guide, and in it I found the average selling price for the GTX 980 Ti was $235 US. And taking a quick look today at completed eBay listings, that price still appears to be very accurate. So that then makes this comparison all the more interesting. Should you get the 980 Ti for around $235 US, or buy a brand new GTX 1660 Ti for $280 US? To find out, I've grabbed our Core i9 9900K test system, installed the 980 Ti, and spent a few days getting through a 33 game benchmark. All testing takes place at 1440p, and while I am using a reference card, it has been overclocked to 1190MHz, and this allowed it to hold a typical boost clock of 1.3GHz. So, with that, let's get into the results. I'm going to start with Metro Exodus, as this is the only game where I've included the stock 980 Ti result. The reason I've done this is because rather than test just a dozen or so games, I wanted to aim for at least a 30-something game benchmark. This gives us a much better idea of how the Maxwell GPU stacks up today, and not just in the latest and greatest games, but also those released over the last year. I mention this because for me to test such a massive range of games, it's not really feasible to invest twice as much time to test it well, all over again, so I had to pick either the NVIDIA spec or a really aggressive factory overclock, so I went with the latter. For the most part, the overclock configuration offers 10% more performance with gains as large as 15% seen under certain conditions. For example, here when testing with Metro Exodus, we see that the overclock provided a 9% performance boost, which is decent. Basically, the 980 Ti goes from being slightly slower than the GTX 1070 to slightly faster. So I just wanted to provide this data as a reference point and make it clear that the 980 Ti has been overclocked, but only as far as what you'd find on the more premium, higher-end AIB models such as Gigabyte's Gaming G1, for example. The overclocked 980 Ti performs extremely well in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, beating the GTX 1070 by a few frames to come in just 2 FPS down on the 1660 Ti and 1070 Ti. Moving on, we find that Forza Horizon 4 is a good game to include in this comparison as it utilizes modern GPU architectures really well. As such, the overclock 980 Ti was only able to match the Radeon RX 590, making it a little over 10% slow on the 1660 Ti and RTX 2060. Next up, we have Just Cause 4, and here the GTX 980 Ti came in just behind the GTX 1070 and 1660 Ti. Nothing that unusual about these results, so let's just move on. Firing up Resident Evil 2, we see that the overclock 980 Ti is able to roughly match the GTX 1660 Ti, making it 16% slower than the RTX 2060. Now, testing with Hitman 2, we saw the 980 Ti was basically matching the GTX 1660 Ti, while it was 14% slower than the RTX 2060 and 16% slower than Vega 56, so a pretty solid result here for the old Maxwell flagship GPU. Fortnite uses the Unreal 4 engine, and this engine is fairly familiar with the Pascal architecture. 
Here the overclock 980 Ti just edged out both the GTX 1070 and 1660 Ti to come in just behind the GTX 1070 Ti and it really wasn't that much slower than the RTX 2060. It also beat AMD's Vega 56 by a 6% margin. The 980 Ti performs really well relative to the Pascal competition in Rainbow Six Siege, beating the 1070 by a few frames to come in just behind the 1070 Ti. That said, Turing seems to perform really well in this title, and as such the 980 Ti was 10% slower than the 1660 Ti and 22% slower than the RTX 2060. When testing with Battlefield 5, we see that the overclock 980 Ti is on par with the GTX 1070, and we also find much the same when comparing it to the GTX 1660 Ti. Just a few frames in it there. We also see that the 980 Ti was 14% slower than a typical AIB version of the RTX 2060. Not a massive margin, but given that the Maxwell GPU did come at an MSRP of $650 US, the fact that we're now getting more performance for just $350 US seems like pretty good news. Though I suppose you would at the very least expect this given that the RTX 2060 is four years newer. Although it's gone through several major upgrades, World of Tanks at its core is still a very old game now. That being the case, it is well optimized for older GPU architectures, and as a very popular title, Nvidia has made sure that aging GPUs still perform where they should. In the case of the 980 Ti, that means delivering GTX 1070 Ti like performance, making it 16% faster than the 1660 Ti and just 6% slower than the RTX 2060. Apex Legends is one of the newest games we're testing with here, and as you can see, the overclock 980 Ti falls just short of the GTX 1070 and is quite a way behind the GTX 1660 Ti and massively behind the RTX 2060. In short, the gap to Pascal isn't that large, but the more complex Turing architecture provides a significant performance uplift here, especially if we were to compare GPUs with a similar core count. The last game we're going to look at closely is Far Cry New Dawn, and here the overclock 980 Ti matched the stock GTX 1070 and 1660 Ti with an average of 74 FPS. That said, it was 15% slower than the RTX 2060, though I'm not suggesting that makes the budget RTX option a worthwhile upgrade for a current 980 Ti owner, as it doesn't. Okay, so as we've found time and time again in the past, the GTX 980 Ti and GTX 1070 deliver basically the same performance. At the stock Nvidia spec, the 1070 is generally a little bit faster, and with both overclocked to the max, they're also much the same. Though I think it's fair to say the 980 Ti generally does a little better overall thanks to its huge degree of overclocking headroom. For the most part, we found that the stock Vega 56 graphics card beat the 980 Ti, and overall, the old GeForce GPU was 7% slower on average. There were just five games where the 980 Ti won by a 5% margin or greater, but given what you can typically get these things for on the secondhand market, they are often a much better choice for budget conscious buyers. Okay, so time for the GTX 1660 Ti comparison, and here we see overall the 980 Ti was a whisker faster, edging out the budget Turing GPU by a 2% margin. Of course, while we used a stock MSI GTX 1660 Ti Gaming X card, the 980 Ti was overclocked. That said, you can only squeeze about 5, maybe 10% more out of the 1660 Ti anyway, so it's probably still going to lose that comparison. But it's still great to see that we're finally getting 980 Ti levels of performance for under $300. Then finally we have the RTX 2060, and even with the overclock, the 980 Ti just couldn't hang with the stock 2060. On average, the flagship Maxwell part was 12% slower, but we see examples of it up to 20, 25% slower when looking at Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Rainbow Six Siege, Wolfenstein 2, and Apex Legends. So, the once mighty GeForce GTX 980 Ti has now been matched by a sub $300 GPU. I only took about four years. I guess if you did drop $650 US on a 980 Ti all those years ago, and you still have it today, gaming at 1440p, then it's fair to say you did get your money's worth. Of course, for such a person, the GTX 1660 Ti and RTX 2060 simply won't warrant an upgrade, as that really would be more of a side grade. That said, if you're a $650 GPU kind of shopper, then it was unlikely these lower tier mid-range offerings were ever going to entice you. For that, you're probably after an RTX 2080, and in titles such as Metro Exodus, you'd be looking at just over a 60% performance boost, so that's obviously very significant. 
Now, if you're tossing up between buying a new GTX 1660 Ti or a used GTX 980 Ti, that's a tough one. Actually, it's probably not really. While you could potentially save around $50 by buying a 980 Ti, as I said, the typical selling price is $235 US, there's always the possibility that you might have to pay more than that for a good model. Alternatively, if you're willing to bide your time, you might manage to get one even cheaper. There's a bit of an art to buying secondhand, but no matter how good you are, there are still some unavoidable pitfalls. Obviously, the 980 Ti is an old product now. It was discontinued about three years ago, so it's extremely unlikely any model you buy will still come with a warranty. So for me, the risk for around a $50 saving just doesn't seem worth it. I'd be wanting to save much closer to $100 US to take the plunge on a three to four year old graphics card. There's also the issue of driver support. Without question, the GTX 1660 Ti is going to age better moving forward. Again, the Maxwell architecture is quite old now, so you can expect to see less time spent on driver optimizations in the future. Overall, I have to say the GTX 980 Ti has aged very well, and today it's still capable of delivering an enjoyable 1440p gaming experience. But to justify buying one today, you'd have to be getting it for under $200 US in my opinion. Anything more than that, I feel like the risk of buying secondhand just isn't worth it. I feel like you're probably just better off playing it safe and getting a shiny new GTX 1660 Ti. And that is going to do it for this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and if you appreciate the work we do at Harrowbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.